boys and girls. Today's April 2nd, 2020. I hope you're enjoying your first week of virtual learning at home. It's different for all of us, isn't it? I'm glad we can be together for this first read aloud. I wondered, do any of you have these books at home? Do you know someone that has them? Maybe your little brother or sister was given them as a gift when they were little. I know my girls had the tale of Peter Rabbit on their bookshelves when they were little. And this is the tale of Benjamin Bunny. Jennifer had a little Benjamin Bunny that she would sleep with every night. These books are written by a famous author who lived in the past. Her name was Beatrix Potter. She was born and lived in England. She wrote many children's books just like this that tell about the tales of animals and, and their natural world. And we've been learning and studying about the life cycles of animals, haven't we, this week? So I thought it would be a fun way to introduce you to Beatrix Potter today by reading you a biography about her. So today we're going to read this book, the biography of Beatrix Potter. Now remember, a biography is a nonfiction book written about a person's life. So this author, Alexandra Wallner, wrote this book, which is a biography, about Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter was a famous author. Now, as I'm reading the story, I want you to think about some questions because you're going to need to come up with some answers to these questions in an assignment that I'm going to give you on Friday. In what ways did Beatrix Potter's life influence her writing of these books. So as I'm reading her biography, I want you to think about her life and what she experienced when she was growing up and how did that affect her writing? I also want you to answer this question. Why are her children's books so small? Why are her children's books so small? So think about that. If you listen carefully to the story, of her life, her biography, the answer's in there. So let's read together Beatrix Potter. So when I open the book, I see a page that's called a dedication page. That means the author of this biography, Alexandra Wallner, dedicated this quote from Beatrix Potter to a friend named John. And the quote says, I have just made stories to please myself because I never grew up. Hmm. That's an interesting thing for someone to say. I just made stories to please myself because I never grew up. Helen Beatrix Potter was born in London, England on July 28, 1866. She was the first child of her parents, Rupert and Helen Potter. Her brother, Bertram, was born five years later. Like many children in wealthy English families, Beatrix and Bertram didn't see much of their parents. They were left in the care of governesses. A governess is somebody that would come to their house and teach them every day. Or maybe the governess would live with them and be their school teacher at home. Instead of going to school, they had their lessons at home. They hardly saw other children. Occasionally, their parents allowed them to play with their cousins. Beatrix and Bertram were lonely. They spent a lot of time drawing and painting flowers and animals. Their many pets became their only friends. Without the adults knowing, they hid rabbits, frogs, lizards, newts, snakes, salamanders, bats, mice, and a turtle. Even after the pets died, they saved the skeletons and drew the bones. Beatrix was especially fond of two pet mice named Hunkamunka and Apley Dapley and a rabbit named Peter. 
Mr. and Mrs. Potter encouraged Beatrix and Bertram to study art. Beatrix's father enjoyed photography and collected paintings. When Beatrix was old enough, he took her to museums. He introduced her to John Everett Malaeus, a famous painter who showed her his studio. Thanks to her father, Beatrix saw how an artist lived and worked. In the summers, Beatrix went to Scotland with her family. The Potters rented different houses near the woods. Beatrix kept a diary written in her own code. The sights and sounds of the woods were like magic to her and everything was romantic in my imagination, she wrote. She also liked to paint wildflowers and small woodland animals. Years of practice made her an excellent painter. When Beatrix was 17, her parents sent Bertram to, to boarding school. So boys and girls, that means Bertram went to live away from the family in a school. Kind of like how when some kids go to college now, they don't live at home, they live at their school. So that's what um, her, their parents did when Bertram um, was older. When Beatrix was 17, her parents sent Bertram to boarding school. Now she was lonelier than ever. Her mother hired Annie Carter to be her companion. Annie was only three years older than Beatrix. It was the first time Beatrix had a friend who was a girl. She loved Annie and enjoyed her company, but two years later, Annie got married and moved away. Beatrix was alone again. She wrote, I cannot rest, I must draw. When I have a bad time come over me, it is a stronger desire than ever. Bad times came over her often, Throughout her life, she had periods of bronchitis and rheumatic fever, which left her heart weak. Her mother and father were strict. As Beatrix grew older, she wished she could make her own decisions. Beatrix got a pet rabbit and named him Bounce. She painted him from all angles, wearing human clothes, as if he were a person. A greeting card company bought some of these paintings. They were published along with some verses in a booklet called A Happy Pair. But the money she earned from that was not enough to support herself. She still had to live with her parents. One night when Beatrix was particularly lonely and there was no one to talk to, she wrote a letter to a little boy named Noel. He was the son of her former companion, Annie Carter. Dear Noel, I don't know what to write to you, so I shall tell you a story about four little rabbits whose names are Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. She wrote the first version of the tale of Peter Rabbit, although she didn't know it at the time. She didn't think about writing other stories because she was more interested in making drawings and keeping notes on science. When Beatrix was in her 20s, she painted the mushrooms she had collected in Scotland during her summer vacations. She had learned a great deal about them. She noted in her diary that rotted mushrooms might be used in cancer research. Beatrix wanted to publish a report and sell the 300 paintings of mushrooms she had completed. Sadly, her research was not taken seriously because she lived at a time when men considered themselves the experts in the study of science. So her work was not accepted. Beatrix was hurt because she felt she knew more about mushrooms than almost anyone in England. Again, Beatrix turned to animals for comfort. She borrowed back the letters she had written to Noel, rewriting the story about the four little rabbits. Although she sent it to several publishers, none wanted it. Beatrix did not give up though. In 1901, she decided to have 250 copies of the story printed herself. 
Beatrix gave the stories to her friends. The rest she left with local bookstores. She was encouraged when they quickly sold out. An editor at Frederick Warren Publishers saw one of the books. He wanted her to make the drawings larger and rewrite the story. Beatrix was excited. She agreed to rewrite the text, but would not enlarge the pictures. The book needed to be small, she told him, so that children's hands could hold it easily. Beatrix got her way, and the tale of Peter Rabbit was published in 1902, when Beatrix was 36 years old. The book was very popular and made a lot of money for her. In 1905, Beatrix bought Hilltop Farm in the rural Lake District of England. But Beatrix remained living at home because that was expected of an unmarried daughter. When she could get away from her parents, she stayed at Hilltop and wrote tales of mice, rabbits, squirrels, foxes, cats, dogs, and farm animals. She remembered how lonely she had been as a child. Animals had always made her feel better. She wanted to write about her animal friends for other lonely children. She wrote of a pet hedgehog named Mrs. Tiggywinkle and a pet duck called Jemima Puddle Duck. When Beatrix wasn't writing, she tended her garden and took care of her animals. She kept cows, sheep, pigs, and chickens. Finally, Beatrix was doing what she wanted and was happy. Beatrix sent her stories to Norman Warren, who was now her editor. They wrote many letters to each other. After a while, they fell in love. In 1905, Norman proposed to Beatrix. That means he asked her to marry him. Although her parents did not want her to marry, she accepted. But she never married Norman. Suddenly, he became sick and died. Beatrix was very sad. She spent a lot of time writing more stories. All of her books were popular. In 1909, Beatrix bought another farm called Castle Cottage. During the purchase, she met a lawyer named William Helis. They both enjoyed animals and farming. They fell in love and were engaged in 1912. Again, Mr. and Mrs. Potter disapproved. Even so, in 1913, Beatrix married William and they moved to Castle Cottage. Beatrix was happy with William. She wasn't lonely anymore. After her marriage, she hardly wrote and painted at all. Her eyesight was getting weak, and she preferred spending to her time with her animals and farming. Beatrix bought many surrounding farms and turned the houses into museums. She also wanted to keep the woods and the fields the way they were. So she had footpaths created for the tourists who visited the lakes. This way, they would not step on the wildflowers and disturb the small animals in their homes. As Beatrix grew older, she spent most of her time raising Herdwick sheep. They won many prizes at the local county fairs. The Herdwick Sheep Breeders Association elected her as their first and only woman president. Beatrix died on December 22, 1943, at the age of 77. She had written 23 tales and other books, which were read by children around the world. Even though Beatrix was famous, she remained private and modest. If I have done anything, even a little, to help children on the road to enjoy and appreciate honest, simple pleasures, I have done a bit of good, she said. 
So now that you've heard the biography of Beatrix Potter, can you think of some things that happened in her life that would make her want to write children's books like she did? Why are her books so small? Did you hear the answer? Tomorrow, for your project-based learning, you're going to be making or starting to work on a Beatrix Potter brochure. Some of this you'll do on your own, and some of it I'm going to help you with next week. I sent your parents two sheets of paper that look like this. If they can, print them back to back so that they become one sheet of paper. That will make it easy for you to then fold it into a brochure. If you can't get your papers on two sheets, then just staple them or use some tape and fold it into thirds, three equal parts. Boys and girls, I'm proud of you for working hard at home. I know this is a different and unusual time, but we can do it together. And don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions at all. I'm very proud of each of you. See you next time.